and we looked at him as if he were a grown man about to be 40. You know what I mean? Having his life figured out. We didn't look at Biggie as if he were a young man in his 20s, mid-20s. So when he passed away, the world lost a legend, but a mother lost her son, a kid. What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Cardi King, a.k.a. Young Cardi, and you are now tuned into the Major Key Unlimited podcast. This is a section that we call Bar for Bar, where we break down some of the most iconic songs by some of the most iconic artists of all time. Today, we are going to cover Juicy by the Notorious B.I.G. So, verse one. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. So I'm Pepper and Heavy D up in the limousine, hanging pictures on the wall. Every Saturday, rap attack, Mr. Magic, Molly Mall. Okay, so in this instance, um, it was all a dream. You know what I'm saying? I used to read Word Up magazine. Word Up magazine, that was what the what Double XL magazine is right now. What what the Source magazine used to be uh, for us. What um, what Vibe Vibe magazine. We had three major magazines, you know what I mean, in my era, you know what I mean? The Source, Vibe, Double XL. Some people may call it XXL. I call it Double XL. A lot of people call it Double XL. But um, back to what I was saying. You had Word Up Magazine. Back in the day, Word Up Magazine was everything that you can go to for hip hop, our culture. You had teen beat uh not teen beat tiger beat over here and i was more on like the caucasian side of things for a lack of a better term uh where everything that you can go to for uh pop records and all of your boy bands and all of the uh any kind of teen idol that you can go to for like you know uh people who are on the pop charts and everything, but Word Up magazine was ours. That's what you had to go to to listen to hip hop and and look for all of the cool clothes, what new sneakers was coming out, what uh rap acts was going on. So you go on a Word Up magazine and you browse through there and you can see pictures of Salt and Pepper. You can see pictures of Heavy D. You can see pictures of um. You can see pictures of uh, uh you know everybody that was popping at that time. Um, like he said, Kumo D, Magic, uh, uh, I mean, you got Marley Mall, um, you know, everybody that was popping at that time. So, uh, hanging pictures up on my wall. That's what we used to do back in the day. We go get a, open up a magazine. You peel the pictures out of the magazine. You hanging them up on your wall. You looking at the pictures, uh, while you laying down in the bed and you looking up on that wall and you just idolizing all of these people that's hanging up on your wall and you saying one day that that's where you're going to be. I'm going to be right there. And it's self-explanatory. I mean, it was all a dream. And he was sitting there in his room one day saying, you know, I'm going to be that person on that picture one day. You know what I mean? Being in that <laughs> Word Up magazine. So same thing, uh, stepping out of the limousine the same way that Salt and Pepper and Heavy D was hanging up out of there. So and as far as the the Saturday rap attack with <laughs> Magic, uh, Mr. Magic and Marley Mall, Marley Mall, you know, Marley Mall was was the guy, the go to guy for all of us. Um, back back then, you know what I mean? Uh, DJ Cool Herc, um, Marley Mall, Red Alert. So um, yeah, you had it. You had select few people. Tape rock till my tape pop. Smoking weed and bamboo, sipping on private stock. Way back when I had the red and black lumberjack with the hat to match. We had tape decks. We ain't have no CDs. Uh, I mean, you know, CDs was a thing. It was they were coming out back then. But we had we had tapes. You know what I'm saying? You played your tapes in your tape deck. You know what I mean? We had big old boom boxes, and the the bigger your boom box was, the more impressive it was. The the more money you had. Looking like Radio Raheem walking around from Do the Right Thing, carrying your boombox on your shoulder. You know what I mean? And and if you had, if you was really 
on some flexing type stuff, you know what I mean? You had the boom box that had the double size where you could dub tapes and everybody would come to you trying to dub um, some tapes and, and you was recording the newest stuff that was coming out and you was the guy who was making the mixtapes and, and bootlegging tapes in the hood and selling your tapes and, and, and all of that. So you let your tape rock until it popped. If that tape popped, you played it so much to where your actual, the, the tape, your cassette tape, what pop because you played it so much and believe me you don't know that pain of uh playing your records so much to where that tape pop and now you ain't got no choice but to go and buy another one man that's that's some hurt and i done been through that playing uh raekwon the the purple tape oh my god only built for cuban links the purple tape and they called it the purple tape because the tape was literally purple which was ingenious but we'll say that for a whole nother video but uh purple tape when that joint pop man heartbroken but uh <laughs> yeah smoking weed and bamboo sipping on profit stock i mean it is what it is you smoking weed and bamboo you got your papers you sipping on profit stock profit stock you know you is very expensive uh you know that's self-explanatory. We ain't got to go there. Way back when I had the red and black lumberjack, but the hat to match. You got your, your flannel shirt. We got, you know, the iconic picture. The iconic picture with Biggie wearing a red and black flannel with the hat to match the red and black hat. It's a very iconic picture. You can you can Google with him having a red and black, quote unquote, lumberjack with the hat to match. You know what I mean? And everybody uh, back in that, in this era, you know, we talk in 1994, New York, you got to think about the brutal winners, the, the, the cold fall time, the winners having that lumberjack hat with the flannel shirts to match. It's going to keep you warm out here. But it was that, uh, that hip hop steez, that dope boy era, you wearing that. But you can look up the iconic picture. So he's rapping about his real life. Remember rapping Duke, the ha, the ha. You never thought the hip hop would take it this far. Now I'm in a limelight because I rhyme tight. Time to get paid, blow up like the world trade. Now, this is real important to say because the rapping Duke was a guy named Sean Brown. And you can uh, you can Google Sean Brown. He had the whole hat and everything. So when I was a kid, you know, having this, that hat kind of looking like a court jester, looking like a magician or something. And uh, you can look at uh he he created a character called the rapping duke and uh you know with the whole the ha the ha thing that biggie was talking about in the sound that he does like the ha or whatever you can google it and rapping duke just being like a whole character but how he was rapping it was on some like uh more childlike kind of stuff you gotta you gotta realize at this time, rap was still in its uh, infantile stage. Rap is not an old sport by any means, not an old um, art form by any means right now. So, rap and Duke, just go back, do your research. Sean Brown, you can look him up with the hat and everything. It's not just something that he was saying just to rhyme. <clears throat> Pardon. It's not something that he was just saying just to rhyme. This is an actual person actual character that this guy had created and it's just cool to see something even from back then how creative we were getting with the art form with sean creating this whole character called the rapping duke and even taking it as far as to have the hat and everything that he was wearing it's just a dope part of our history a dope part of our culture you know what i mean uh, a dope part of our art form with the rapping duke doing such so um now I'm in the limelight cause I rhyme tight Time to get paid, blow up like the world trade Born center, the opposite of a winner Remember when I used to eat sardines for dinner With him talking about uh, the world trade center With uh, time to get paid, blow up like the world trade So it's just crazy that a lot of people thought that Biggie was predicting the future With him saying time to get paid and blow up like the world trade is a sensitive topic right now at this moment because a lot of people lost you know their lives and a lot of people lost their family members with the uh the collapse of the world trade center in 92 93 i believe i'm not exactly sure on the date don't quote me on the year but there was a guy that came there 
with a with a bomb in a bag, and he tried. Uh, he had a he had an attack on the World Trade Center, and that's the one that Biggie was referring to. So, peace to Ron G, Brucey B, Kick Capri, Funk Master Flex, Love Bug, Starsky. I'm blowing up like you thought I would. Call it crib, same number, same hood. It's all good. And if you don't know, now you know. I made the change from a common thief to up close and personal with Robin Leach. And I'm far from cheat, smoke skunk with my peeps all day. Spread love, it's the Brooklyn way. So I made the change from a common thief to up close and personal with Robin Leach. He's talking about going from, you know, he was a stick up kid. He was robbing, he was doing his thing. He was hustling. You have to do what you got to do. Um, sometimes when you out here on the come up, you know what I mean? Um, no stranger to being out in bed style, being a stick up kid, being a hustler, getting locked up, you know, a couple of times, having to call your mother at two, three o'clock in the morning saying, yo, you know, I'm in jail. I'm down here at the precinct. Can you, uh, can you come and get me? You know, from from being that kid to being up close and personal with Robin Leach. And Robin Leach hosted a show called Lifestyles of the Rich and Famous, where it was pretty much a bona fide um, MTV Cribs for anything opulent, anything uh, mega rich, mega wealthy, mega famous. Pardon me, I got the hiccups. Anything mega rich, wealthy, famous, uh, any Fortune 500 company uh operator or owner anything like that uh you got to see a day in their life the behind the scenes you know lifestyle of what was going on with them what's happening robin leach was that guy who was showing you what was going on in their life uh you know he he took you into their lifestyle their companies their houses their their you know what did they do for fun you know what i mean hanging out on their boats uh doing things like that you know boats and hoes whatever he was doing <laughs> and he was a british guy who was doing who was doing his thing so i smoke skunk with my peeps all day spread love it's the brooklyn way you know so we know what that's about you know you're smoking your thing you're doing it you, you're doing with your people you know you're spreading the love spreading the wealth you know with your, with, with all your people so the Moet and Alizé keep me pissy. Girls used to diss me now they write letters because they miss me i never thought it would happen this rapping stuff I was too used to packing gats and stuff. So same thing, you know what I mean? You go from back then, they didn't want me. Now I'm hot, they all on me. You know, the same, the, the Mike Jones effect, if you will. You know, um, the girls used to diss me and now they write letters because they miss me. You know what I mean? They, they didn't want me, but now that I'm making some money, they all on me. You know, I never thought it could happen. It's rapping stuff. I was too used to packing gats and stuff. Just like I said, you you being a stick up kid, you know, you never truly think that this rapping thing could happen. It was all a dream, as the song implies. You know, you sitting there, you thinking, you thinking, and again, with rap being still kind of in its infantile stage, you know, right now to this day in 2021, it's still in its infantile stage. In 1994, it was even more so in his infantile stage. So being a rapper just wasn't a thing as it is right now, being a rapper. It wasn't the same, you know, it was something to do. And yeah, you can make some money, but the major endorsements weren't there. The sneaker, uh, you know, endorsement weren't there. You, you didn't have rappers being yeezy you know what i mean you didn't have jay-z yet making s dots you didn't have none of that was there so you have to understand like i never thought it could happen is rapping stuff that's a very real statement because maybe you make it maybe you don't but you can always be right back on that corner packing gats and robbing people you understand what i'm saying so that that's a very real thing you got to understand so now honey's play me close like butter plate toast from the mississippi down to the east coast condos and queens endo for week sold out seats to hear biggie small speak so you know what i mean you're going from condos to uh sold out shows and and it's still unbelievable you understand what i'm saying is is this thing coming to fruition everything that you thought that it could be is now coming to life before your eyes you know what i mean living life without fear 
Putting five carrots in my baby girl ear. Lunches, brunches, and a view by the pool. Considered a fool, cause I dropped out of high school. Stereotypes of a black male misunderstood. And it's still all good. All of these things, all of the odds are stacked up against you. You know what I mean? You dropped out of school. You had a kid at a young age. Um, you 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 robbing, you stealing, you just doing all of the dirt in the world. You coming from bed style, which is, you know, just robbing capital in Brooklyn and and you you're taking a shot at rapping. And by all means, you're taking that shot <laughs> with Sean Combs, right? Who this is also a very, very, very integral part of the story as well. We know Diddy as we know Diddy right now in 2021. But Puffy in 1994, you got to understand, he was working at Uptown Records, okay? He was working at Uptown Records as an intern. He gets fired from Uptown Records. So he has no plan. He's a socialite who graduated from Howard. So... You know, he has he has his degree in business and he's doing his socialite thing. You know, he, he's a Harlem cat. So he's cool. He got swag and all of that, but he gets fired from Uptown. So being fired from Uptown, you don't have that that clout anymore like you did being around all of the cats that you were around. So now you starting your own. You starting Bad Boy. You just now starting your label. You just now getting a logo. You just now trying to get funding. So not only is Biggie taking a chance on becoming a rapper, he's having somebody take a chance on him, but he's taking a chance on them betting on him because you don't know if Bad Boy is going to pan out. Bad Boy is not an established label. Puffy is not an established record executive. So all of these things are not established. So you have to put that into perspective as well. So in the back of his mind, he's like, look, I got Tiana. I got a daughter. You know what I mean? I'm trying to feed my kid. I don't know where my life is going. And I'm a kid at the same time. Biggie died when he was 25. So when, at the time of recording this record, he's what, 23? at the most, you know what I'm saying? So we're looking at this guy, everything that he accomplished in his lifetime and how we looked at him as a grown man. Imagine the things that you did at 25. Some of you watching this video right now, what, 29, 28, you know what I mean? Maybe you're just now getting your life going, you know what I mean? Maybe you're just now figuring out what's happening. Maybe you're 25 and just now getting out of college, just really getting your PhD or whatever. And you're trying to figure it out. We're looking at him who passed away at 25. And we looked at him as if he were a grown man about to be 40. You know what I mean? Having his life figured out. We didn't look at Biggie as if he were a young man. In his 20s, mid-20s. So when he passed away, the world lost a legend, but a mother lost her son, a kid. He was a kid. A mother lost a kid. So you have to understand all of these things that were going on in this man's head. This song is a very real thing. So when you go into that next verse, when he's saying, Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, when I was that broke, man, I couldn't picture this. Not only is he talking about how he couldn't picture affording any of this, he's still a kid playing video games himself anyway. So, you know, these are the new video games that are coming out, comparable to having a PS5 or the new Xbox that's coming out. To a 25-year-old, it's like, yo, I got all of these new things that are coming out, and I couldn't picture having any of this coming out of the projects you know, when I was younger anyway, you know what I mean? 50 yen screen, leather green sofa, got two rods, a limousine with a chauffeur. Phone bill about 2G's flat, no need to worry, my accountant handles that. You know what I mean? And my whole crew is lounging, celebrate every day, no more public housing. Thinking back to a one-room shack, now my mom pimps an act with minks on the back.
all of this at 20, you know, 25, like I said, when he passed away, but this is at 23 years old. He's providing all of this. He's putting on a whole team, $2,000, $2,000 at 23 years old. Can you imagine that? Like I said, you had to call in high school. I'm telling people, yo, call me back after seven o'clock. Call me back after nine o'clock. Y'all probably have no idea what the hell I'm talking about right now because you like, call me back after seven, call me back after nine. You had to do that when I was in high school. You had to do that in order to talk on the phone for free. You know what I'm saying? Even if you had a prepaid, what, whatever, there wasn't no, yo, I got a prepaid phone. I got this and that. I got to buy. Yo, you had to call me back after seven o'clock or call me back after nine o'clock in order for me to talk so I can have some free time to talk and not have to worry about my minutes running out. Yes, we had to worry about minutes. It wasn't no unlimited. I didn't have no $50 and I could just talk and just jaw jacking on the phone until we fell asleep on the phone. I ain't falling asleep talking to you on the phone. I ain't wasting my minutes. You better talk to me about something important or hit me back later. Text, you better get them thumbs working. You know what I'm saying? Say what you gotta say. Or get out of here. You know what I'm saying? This man talking about some 2G's flat on a phone bill at 23 years old and putting together a whole team of people, putting his family on. Junior Mafia was a whole thing. Putting on his family, his friends, Little C's, Little Kim. You know what I mean? Little C's is his actual cousin. Little Kim, you know, down the block. You know what I'm saying? And then St. James right down the block, you know, this is his people. And uh, so he's handling all of this stuff at 23 years old. This is something real to say. You understand what I'm saying? So and she loves to show me off, of course, smiles every time my face is up in the source. We used to fuss when the landlord dissed us. No heat. Wonder why Christmas missed us. Birthdays was the worst days. Now we sip champagne when we thirsty. Damn right I love the life I live Cause we went from negative to positive And it's all good So Again you know my mom's up in the act You know what I mean Is she up in the Acura You riding around with that With that fancy Acura with, with a mink on your back You know what I mean All these expenses that he's handling You know what I'm saying We didn't. We couldn't go to the shade room or, or Instagram to go see what our favorite rappers was doing We had to wait two years in between each project or we had to wait to see if if uh BET had any kind of thing or MTV with uh any kind of behind the scenes videos or anything like that other than that you had to wait to see whatever sporadic movements that your your favorite rapper your favorite artist or anything was was putting out in order for you to see what was happening so anytime his mother saw him up in the source magazine she can remember those days you know, Miss Wallace can remember picking him up from, from jail to now she's seeing him being famous, world-renowned artist at 23 years old. You know what I mean? And and Christmas missed us. You know, no heat in a New York winter with no heat with the landlord dissed us, kicking us out. You know what I mean? Christmas missed us. You know, birthdays was the worst days. Now we sip champagne when we thirsty. Like, this man, yo, went from negative to positive. Now it's all good. So this song is the ultimate triumph story from, you know, each verse just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It went from, it was all a dream. How he sat seeing Salt and Pepper and Heavy D up in a limousine to becoming, you know, that guy who he saw in those magazines to ultimately being able to put other people on and putting them in that position and having that lifestyle and taking care of his family and supporting his family and supporting other people. So everything from a dream. When you begin to change the way you look at things around you, the things around you begin to change. You understand? So when he focused all of that energy into positive thinking and and he and Puffy both put all of that energy into focusing on 
changing their environment and doing something positive and putting all of that time and operating together into something, you know, a common goal. Look at the outcome, you know, that that manifestation of this is what I want. This is all a dream. And they manifested those goals. You know what I mean? So, Juicy is the ultimate triumphant story of manifestation. This has been another episode of Bar for Bar. Thanks for tuning in to Major Key Unlimited. This your boy Young Cardi, aka Cardi the King. Make sure to please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Tell me who you want to see next.